what's going on guys it is late it is late as you can see i got the lights turned down low so i could just chill back and relax and enjoy a game but um we're having issues with my youtube streaming and boy oh boy hmm. where did we start for my troubleshooting i don't know but i'm gonna bring you guys along the way to show you how I'm going to troubleshoot this issue to hopefully resolve it. Stay tuned, guys. YouTube is not receiving enough video to maintain a smooth streaming. When we look at OBS, let me close this window. OBS is basically stating that our encoding is overloaded. What we're gonna do is select settings, go into settings, uh, go into our output. And just for any of you guys that may be thinking like, oh, it's your hardware. Need to upgrade and blah, blah, blah. CPU has a low utilization. We got enough memory here. GPU right now is at 54 utilization. Have our GPU, it's steady flowing. We're not gonna jump into that GPU yet. Not yet, guys, okay? Let's do a speed test. So from your keyboard, just type speed test right here. Go. We got a good 100 up, 100 down connection from our ISP. So something with encoding, that's what it's currently stating. Look, just look at this. It's not with computer performance because this thing is, I'm gonna wave my hand. There's no lag, so you guys see it. No lag here. So we're gonna go to settings. But let me look at the streaming. So streaming, I have this unchecked. I wanna make sure that's unchecked, okay? Go to output. Our settings are, uh, so we got AMD, that's that. Rescale output, check for 1920, uh, 1080p. Our preset is set for YouTube streaming. Quality preset is set for balance. Prepass is disabled. Target bitrate is at 10,000. That's not within the recommended range. And I'm going to show you guys that this is basically YouTube's um, recommendation. So 1080p at 60 frames per second with a 1920 1080p resolution. Video bitrate range 4,500 by 9,000. So what we're going to do is we're going to basically knock this target bitrate down to 9,000, guys. Can I get a 9,000? All right, yes I can, all right. So we're gonna hit apply, we're gonna hit okay. Apply and okay. Give that a couple of minutes and let YouTube do its thing. So guys, I also just remembered that back in the days with OBS, you can make certain like bitrate changes on a fly, but however, programs, you know, they always have, let's just say they have their flaws. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit stop streaming since we made a change. So now we're going to hit start stream. I'm going to dismiss this and it's going to basically reload. And then it's going to see that, okay, it's ready to do another streaming. After a couple minutes, probably like what, five or seven, YouTube finally produced an image of our live stream. But as you can still see, it's there's definitely a delay because I'm talking and that's me just chilling. We're not getting that error message there. So I'm kind of wondering if I should change the encoder. Because right now I think we're just on the GPU. So let's see something here. Let's see how our GPU is looking. It's at 80% of utilization. So yeah, it looks like we're utilizing the GPU. Because our CPU is it's very, very, very low. I don't want to change the encoder to the CPU. That's the whole point of having a video card, you know? What else can I do? Uh, like top of my head, what's telling me is that basically, let's go restart the routers. Let's restart um, our ISP router. Let's restart our wireless router that the computer is currently connected to. It's connected to the wireless router, which is connected by ethernet connection, not wireless, but ethernet. So I think we should restart both of them because again, your routers, they process data. Ethernet connection is still data. Let's do that. Let's give that a shot. Stop the stream, restart our network hardware, come back and see. Just in case somebody may need this information. So how I commonly do it when it comes to restarting routers, I restart the ISP router, which is basically the router that's provided by your cable company. 
All right, so I do a power cycle of that, and then I run to my, you know, my wireless router, which I have my gaming and video PC connected to the wireless router by ethernet connection. So I will do a power cycle of that. All right, so ISP router first, then your home router afterwards. Routers, it's not just sending data by connection, it's still data being crunched. Uh, on a router, you still have memory chips. So when your computer is running sluggish, what do you do? You restart it, you know, that's the, that's the quickest way, okay? Well, if your phone, phone is running sluggish and your phone's been on, you know, say for instance, your phone's been on for weeks, you just recharge it, recharge it, and you don't reboot it, uh, and it starts to act sluggish, what do you do with your phone? You restart it. It's the same thing that we're gonna do with this network connection. You guys need to subscribe to my channel. For the people that just wants to see the resolution, hit that subscribe button, and I'll probably make you a video that just shows, here's the issue, here's the resolution, and I'm not even talking. Hit that subscribe button, guys. Just hit it, hit it. Tell all your friends to hit it too. Our routers are back online. We were able to address that issue where we get an error message, but the video is still like delayed. And as you can see, streaming latency is set normal. The way that YouTube kind of explains that is still confusing. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that it's still confusing. So basically before guys, we had the normal latency enabled and by default that is going to be enabled which that i think that gives you delay you know what you actually see here and delay exactly your response to your viewers are going to receive as your response like if they send a comment and says blah 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 you're going to have a delay responding to them in simplest terms it's basically going to give you a low level description of what stream latency is by default Normal latency is checked, if I'm not mistaken, to kind of explain how that interacts with you doing your live stream is one, normal latency gives you a higher level of video quality when it comes to video streaming. However, there are some drawbacks. When it comes to your actual chat and engagement with your viewers, you're gonna have delay in the response with your viewers whenever you have normal latency. In addition, in addition, if you don't have a high speed connection from your ISP and from your actual computer device, your viewers are going to experience buffering, okay? You wanna keep that in mind. Low latency, is uh, in between provides good video quality it's not as high as normal but it's it's really good it's really good so and it also provides you with a uh, somewhat of a live real-time response you got viewers that's posting comments you're able to see them in a somewhat real-time manner ultra low the video quality is not good, okay? However, the positive side of low ultra latency, whenever you have a lot of viewers that are chatting, comments, you're able to keep up with the chats and comments. I would say low ultra latency would be perfect for someone that's just, you know, if you got the camera on me, such as this manner, that is just us talking like if we just have a live stream with me just talking to you engaging to you i mean i guess if you if your live stream is just a, a deck full of cards and you're also responding to comments that i could see low ultra latency works because it's like you're not really showing a high quality video you know to my right hand side under additional settings you see added delay so added delay it basically if i'm not mistaken it adds like a 30 seconds to one minute delay when I guess when you start your YouTube channel when excuse me when you start your live stream it kind of puts a delay in it so those are the three stream latency okay another thing to keep in mind is that your stream key does pay a huge role of what target bit rate you're able to capture so say for example you have a nice high end fast gigabyte connection at home right from your ISP 
and you're getting 800 to 900 megabytes per second up and down, right? So you're able to do a live stream 1080p, 4K, something of that nature. And let's just say, you know, for example, too, your computer is able to handle that demand. You know, your computer components is able to handle it. Now, you go to OBS, you set your target bit rate to 10,000, 11,000, right? And OBS is, is still coming up these, you know, encoder uh, error messages, like encoder overload, okay? But you're like, look, I'm looking at my computer resources. Computer resources aren't stressed out. I got a nice gigabyte ethernet connection from my ISP router. I'm getting between 800 to 900 megabytes up uh, and down, right, connection. So our router is able to handle high quality live streams, but OBS is still telling us, no, mm -mm -mm, can't do it. It's likely that you're using the default YouTube stream keys, which is basically causing that bottleneck, okay? Under stream key settings, what you want to do is you want to customize your stream key see that little drop down arrow just want to select that drop down arrow all right select new stream key you want to basically give it a name i'm just going to say hi in live stream hi live stream video setting all right cool so remember you only see this okay keep this as the default rtmp yes sir under stream resolution you want to turn on manual settings and this allows you to select what type of live stream quality you want yes sir this is it. You need to have a good connection to do so. All right. If I'm not mistaken, guys, I think by default, it's 720p. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's the default is 720p. So say for instance, in OBS, you set your target bit rate to 10,000, 11,000, uh, 15, something of that nature, right? And your network is able to handle it your computer is able to handle it you kind of want to adjust the setting just go up another layer go go up one layer then keep going start off from 720p which is i believe is the default go up to 1080p see how you like it then go up to 1440p see how you like it see how everything handles then go up to 4k okay and we could turn on 60 frames per second and create I'm going to probably test this out and see exactly how well it handles. You guys, when you do your live stream, don't do it public. Uh, if you're doing a live stream test, do it private, which allows you to at least visually see how things are going. Um, you can then go from your phone and also go to that live stream, that private live stream, and you can use your phone or another computer device that signed it to your YouTube to actually join the live stream and kind of engage, like write a comment, see exactly when that comment comes, uh, respond, you know, kind of really test things out. If you're really, really um, adamant on, you want everything to kind of be, I would say not perfect, but good. If you just want to wing it and go for it, you can make it public, but the problem would be is, you know, say for example, you have multiple, like a decent crowd join you. You like got a good group that join you and they get buffering because you're having connectivity issues, then they're just gonna leave. They may not reconnect. Be cautious. You don't wanna waste people's time and you don't wanna waste your time either. So th those are some settings that you guys can ch uh, check. Again, everything depends on the type of computer that you're running, the hardware that you're running on the computer and also your network okay kind of give you guys a little s sneak peek at what i've been doing to my network as you can see uh before the video my connection was 100 megabytes per second up and 100 megabytes per second down but now as you guys can see right here we got 706 let's just say uh 
I had an upgrade. You just got to stay tuned for that video. <laughs> to see exactly what improved my speed. Because by looking at this and by my testament, trust and believe me, those 4K videos, I can stream it. I think this video is long enough. I kind of think that I, I explained it to you guys. I'll probably give you an example of how the latency uh, interacts with YouTube live stream. All right, so our stream is back. We got a good, excellent connection. And we do have the, as you can see, low latency is an enabled. All right, so what I'm going to do, as you guys can see, this is me live on the PC. This is PC side of OBS. This is YouTube side. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put two fingers up as peace, two fingers up as peace. There we go. Now let's see, let's check out that delay. So you guys caught that? So that's that's basically what it what that represents. Now that's still doable to me. That's doable to me, okay? Because look, we're not sacrificing any video quality. Video quality is not. It's it's it's, it's it looks it looks the same to me. It it says it's still at the 1080p by 60 frames per second. Um, so yeah majority of the issues that you experience when it comes to that YouTube error message uh, about your live stream that it's not receiving enough data it, it, it's more so based off of your computer performance and the type of network connection that you have that is that I'm going to wrap this video up short and sweet it wasn't short and sweet for me because i tell you this video editing it is a process i definitely would appreciate if you guys can definitely hit that like button if this video has been helpful to you and please be sure to hit that subscribe button too because it definitely will help out my channel if there's anything that you would like me to do a video on to kind of help you with something you know computer related just let me know Take it easy. Peace.